All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class, I'm doing a series of video presentations for the textbook that will be used for the fall 2019 semester of this class. That textbook being ProASP.NET MVC5 and APRES text by Adam Freeman. Now, when I left off last time, I promised that I was going to key in the nine or whatever it is rows, 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it looks like nine rows. And since we have talked, I have done just that. They're right here. I don't think I can make that any bigger, okay? Probably is a way to increase that size. I don't know what it is. So the author also says on here, so you know, this column, which has got the product ID, and there, there's numbers missing here. I'm not sure why. Okay. You must leave that empty. I did. I listed the product details in table 73 in case you can't make all the details from the figure. doesn't matter if you don't ever enter everything exactly. So... There it is. I guess I should have used that. Probably would have made it a lot easier for me to read. All right. So next on page 174, creating the entity framework context. Recent versions of the entity framework include a feature called code first. The idea is you can define classes in the model and then generate a database for those classes. Now, there's actually three ways this can be done. Now the author is talking about code first, all right? And secondly, there's another way that's called database first, where you create the database and one or more tables and then create the code based off of that. Thirdly, there is yet another way of doing it that's called model first, where you go in and you create a more graphical model and you can create the database and the code based off of that. All right. The author says this is great for greenfield development pro projects, but these are few and far between. Instead, I'm going to show you a variation on code first where I associate the model classes with an existing database. Select tools, library, package manager. Well, you know how to do this. All right. And then we're going to want to install the entity framework and make it available. Notice for our domain and for our web UI. All right, so let's bring up the package manager. We close this. In fact, I'm going to close a few things because there's a lot of stuff open right now. So you know, I can always come back in and open up anything that I decide I want to open up at a later time. We'll leave this products thing here open. All right. So once again, I want to open up the package manager and put in those two lines. To do that from the actual, as you know, to do it from the actual command line, the best way is tools, NuGet package manager, package manager console. We've used this several times already to add Ninject, to add MVC, to add Mock, etc. Now I want to go down to the bottom, right mouse click, and paste that in. So that did the first one, and that's doing the second one. Now the good news about doing this, just so you know the good news about doing that, is well basically I only have to do it once all right and it is setting up a lot of information and you know making a lot of correlations and stuff for me all right so it says you may see errors telling you that binding redirects cannot be created you can safely ignore these warnings I didn't notice any I'm not going to go back and check so this command tells the or adds the entity framework package to the solution. 
I need to install the same package in the domain and the web UI projects so that I can create the classes that we'll need to access the database in the domain project and access the database in the web UI project. The next step is to create what's typically referred to as a context class. All right. Now the author is going to have us create a new folder in our domain project that's called concrete and we're going to add that context to it. It's going to have this and this. Okay, I will tell you, just so you hear this, I am very very much uh, want you to hear the associated verbiage with this, and that is quite often this particular folder, rather than being called concrete, is called DAL, which stands for Data Access Layer. The author didn't do that, but that's okay. All right, so we want to go to the domain. which is right here, all right, and under that domain, create a new folder called concrete, and then we'll want to add this new class into it. Again, I'm doing a lot of copying and pasting from the book just because of the fact that uh, I don't want to worry about making any kind of typos. So it's added that EF Entity Framework DB for Database Context dot CS. And now we want to come in and we want to edit the contents so they match this. So I'm just going to do it from the top. As you can guess, I'm going to get error messages because there's not very much in here. All right, so that fixes it up. And as the author says on page 175, to take advantage of the code first feature, we need to create a class that's derived from system.data.entity. This class then automatically defines a property for each table in the database that we want to work with. The name of the property specifies the table and the type parameter, the model type that the entity framework should use. So we're saying that we're going to have a table named products and it will be defining a product. Next, we need to tell the entity framework how to connect to the database. We do that by adding a database connection string to our web.config file. Now you've seen the web.config file before. All right, and that's actually under the UI here, down at the very bottom. Let me close a few things here to make it a little easier, hopefully, for you to read. It's a little bit better. All right, now in our web.config file. We looked in here before, and we had to go and do a little bit of handiwork to get some of our stuff to work earlier. But under configuration, all right, the author says that we have to add these, this connection string. Double check and make sure there's no connection string in here. I don't see any, but I like to always do this. And you'll notice nothing is being highlighted. 
So it says it doesn't find anything, which is fine. All right, so we want to go right before our app settings, which is right near the top. Looks like we want it in our configuration here. Okay, and I'm literally going to just copy everything from right out of the book right here. It's got the local DB, which we had. The catalog will be sports score. All right, we're setting it up with a minimum amount of security. The provider name is system.data.sql client. As far as I can tell, that looks good. giving me an error here it has an invalid child element and I think I know what that is and that is this should all be one line I believe now that error will have gone up no it didn't Not sure what the problem there is. Hopefully it'll work itself out. Quite often this stuff does. I may have to move this down. It could be different things. Okay? Maybe that I don't want it inside of the section here. So again, this may have to be moved to get it to work. I may have to move it underneath this config section. But that is a configuration, so we'll see as we go on. All right, the author mentions next. It says, notice I have switched the project here. I define the model and the repository logic in the domain but the database connection information is actually put in the web config that's in the UI part. I have had to split the value of the connection string across multiple lines, but it's important for you to put this on a single line. You already saw me do that. Oh, and I'm wondering, last thing before I get out of here. I don't, I think that can be on a different line. That's not why we got the error. This is one attribute. This is another attribute. And this is yet another attribute. All right, so. There will be another add element in the connection strings of the web.config file. Visual Studio creates this element by default. You can either ignore it or as I have deleted from web config. All right, before we go and create the product repository, which is our next step here on page 176, I think we've come to the point where we should stop and we will start to create our next lesson momentarily.